This is my dad and my brother, and they've been building an antenna. I'll hand you over to my dad to tell you more about it. Okay, well that's the uh, introduction that gets a bit of uh, VK2FJC Richard in the uh, in the recording. So here we are, we've got Jay, my older son. Yep, Corey, younger son. He's recently got his ham radio licence. And uh, this is probably our second video of this uh, big project that we've been putting together. I've done a fair bit of work, Corey's done some work on it, fair bit, Jay assisted today with the uh, rear element, some uh, guying of that because it's pretty long on 20 metres, about 38 feet long, so we'll have a look at that in a minute, and of course we've got Corey there with the uh, rig expert antenna analyzer, and we'll just have a quick look at that in a minute. We'll just have a look at this antenna, and you'll see that we've got the old wheelie bins out here, put them to good use, we've now got the antenna up. Oh, three feet or so off the ground and we'll see if that's made any difference before when we we're looking at it it was pretty much sitting on the ground so a few bits and pieces left over from a couple of 20 meter four element yagis and uh, feeding it at the front with a uh, four to one ballon the uh, crossover phasing there 180 degrees out of phase maintains the 200 ohm impedance approximately what these uh, elements are so that's the story we've now got the boom uh, support up as you can see there some gal wire comes down fixes off here onto the boom we use some poly tube there so that uh, if anything uh, comes loose it's not going to short out to those uh, phasing bars I'll just take a backward step here and we'll have a bit of a look over this antenna. We can see now we've got the boom support in place and we'll come down to the rear end here a bit further. Excuse the poor videoing but you can see we've got a strut up from the rear of the antenna, some Dacron rope, a couple of uh, turn buckles there at the top and that's just a piece of uh, a fairly heavy duty PVC we've put a piece of uh, dowel rod in the through the middle of that just to uh, give it some stability and for that eye bolt to go through uh, that fits off here if I come back here a little bit further you can see we've made a small uh, uh, plastic attachment there and it goes onto a DX engineering uh, hose clamp. It's got a little uh, bolt fixed to it which is fantastic for this. The uh, Dacron of course also from DX Engineering. And we'll come in here have a look at the uh, boom to mask clamp again. Bits and pieces off a uh, couple of four element Yagi. So that's the, uh, the, the uh, boom to mask clamp. And of course we've got some new stainless hardware on there. And uh, courtesy of DX Engineering Phasing harnesses, uh, it's just some 20 mil aluminium with the uh, correct spacing there to ma maintain the impedance of this uh, log periodic Yagi. So we'll just go up to Corey uh, Newbold now and uh, he's pretty clever with this uh, rig expert antenalizer, antenna analyzer I should say. So uh, how are we looking with the figures now once it's been lifted off the ground, are we? Uh, are they improved, or is any of the additional uh, things like the uh, the guying, etc., affected the uh, standing wave ratio of this log periodic antenna? Uh, some of the readings have gone up, and some of the readings have gone down. Yep. On 14, uh, 200 megahertz. Yep. I'll just. Uh, the SWR is 1.35 to to one. Hang on. Yep. And it used to be about two to one, so it has improved a lot. Yep. On uh, 18, 160 megahertz, the standing wave ratio is uh, 1.6 to one. Uh, the SWR has actually gone up. It used to be about 1.4 to one. Okay. Not forgetting this antenna's got to go up substantially higher, so the uh, hopefully the ground influences won't have uh, as big an effect. 
Uh, so which one, we're, we're a bit concerned with the uh, reading there that we've got on our Rig Expert on 28500. Which is our main frequency yeah, that we Yeah, so we use. do a bit on 10 metres. Uh, so can we expand this metre out anyway just to have a look at that uh, SWR reading and see where things are yep. uh, happening there, whether the SWR's okay down low or up high. Alright. See if we can find out where the best resonant point is. So what you're doing there is you're putting a... A uh, frequency in, and then I'm putting yep. a uh, one megahertz bandwidth either way, okay. so we can. Yep. So we've got a centre frequency. So the meter now is doing a sweep, and we can see uh, the pattern there, right at the uh, uh, bottom, 28 megs. It's up around two and a half to one. So I guess is kind of acceptable. Centre frequency there minimizes down to 1.2 and away it goes so that doesn't uh, that doesn't concern me too much considering the antenna is very close to the ground and also considering we're standing right next to the element that radiates for 10 meters that's right and considering we've got garbage bins as supports <laughs> that are full of uh, who knows what <laughs> that may be affecting the radiation pattern of this fantastic antenna that we're hoping is going to perform well for us. We're in a situation here where we don't really want to put up the big 20 metre Yagis anymore, we just need an antenna that will enable us to move around from 14 megacycles to 30 megacycles with a little bit of gain and a little bit of uh, rejection off the back and also off the side. Anyway, this is Richard VK2FJC, VK2FCOR, Corey Newbold, and Jay Newbold in the background with the tennis racket, signing over and out.